Tabletop knees at 90 or knees to chest? They both have pros. They both have cons. Let's get on in it. 90 in the knees, tabletop position, is looking for a 90 degree angle of the femur into the acetabulum, into the pelvis. What this also does is allow the femur to settle back into the hip socket and you to really find the support of the mat underneath the entirety of the height of the pelvis and side to side in the pelvis. With that comes immediately this engagement of abdominals and back abs, as I call them, because it's all core, right? Now, if you see an anterior tilt in this position, and therefore shortening in your lumbar muscles, you're going to see this overactivity in the hip flexors to hold this position. Now, this is a dangerous place to move from because now I'm really going to have trouble and activating my extensor system if I want to go to a single leg stretch and the weight of my leg and increasing lever is pulling on my back in a way that is causing, sorry, I got to shake that out, causing all of my lumbar muscles to shorten and tighten and it's making it very difficult to have any support for my front body to meet it because the signal is hip flexor got it all, right? Which is therefore causing my psoas as it acts on my spine to shorten and grip. That's gonna change the abdominal pressure. It's gonna make breathing difficult. There's gonna be a trickle down, right? So you're looking in that 90 tabletop to see that they are actually achieving the strength and stability in the spine that this position is supposed to create. It's a wonderful position for that because you're either doing it and you're in it or you're not, right? <laughs> now, knees to chest. I very much believe that every exercise should have a beginning position and an end position, that the work should be in the through, in the middle. For me, 90 is a working position, right? It takes a lot of work to be here. So for me, this is a through position to the idea of an even heavier lever of the legs on the way towards straight legs. They're gonna get heavier and heavier the lower I send them and the farther away from center they go. But I want to make sure that I can come to a maximum, maximum range of flexion in the knees, which is independent from maximum flexion in the hip socket, which therefore means my ex extensor system needs to be able to have eccentric length. Now, here's where you have to be careful that the lumbar spine has enough support to choose to stay in the position you choose. If I'm choosing a neutral range of pelvis, meaning pelvis is doing its best to have the core work of front, back, and side body support the position of the pelvis in relationship to the rib cage and vice versa, right? That's what my definition of neut neutral range is, okay? So when coming through my tabletop, to come to a starting position of knees to chest, I have to have enough integration to sustain the position of my lumbar spine and truly make hip flexion happen. I'm not gonna pull on my knees, which is what so many people wanna do, pull and therefore drop into their low backs, which is actually overstretching the muscles of my lumbar and using my hip flexors in an action to drop weight back into my lumbar. This is not a position I want to launch out of. This is not a position I want to press out to straight legs, right? If I get stuck in this position, I need to know that I need to go through that tabletop. I need to get to that place of neutral. If I'm going to go 90 higher, if I'm going to go lower, depends on the challenge. But to be able to come into full hip flexion shows me whether or not that spine has enough integrity to allow for deep flexion in the hips and knees without having to compromise all other parts of the spine to do so. 
working tabletop can help give you that strength. But working tabletop slow, alone and all the time isn't going to give you that deep flexion you need for a healthy hip. And if you haven't been working knees to chest, I'm going to show you why it's so important in your stomach massage. If you hate stomach massage, you're not alone. Okay? A lot of people have a lot of problems with their hip flexors in this exercise. The exercise is supposed to strengthen your hip flexors, but also increase their mobility. But if you haven't been working that knees to chest position, going through 90 as a through position, being able to strengthen at 90 and then come back in, well, it makes stomach massage very difficult because you haven't trained your back muscles, side body, front body, you know, core. You haven't trained it all to come in and actually support your spine as weight is shifting. So I'm on two greens just because I want to be able to talk to you while I do this, right? Uh, this is a peak reformer. I have three levels with my foot bar. I could choose a low, which see how much more open the angle is versus... If I come to the standard setting on this reformer, see how the angle of flexion has gotten more acute. I'm coming more knees to chest. And on this reformer, there's even one more. And just for the sake of this video, we're going to work on this level. It's the highest level. It's almost perpendicular to the floor, almost. Now look at this, knees to chest, right? Knees to chest. Now holding at the knees, I could get a little bit of a straight back coming out of this. Imagine this shape. Flipped back onto the Cadillac, I'm laying on my back, knees to chest. I'm going to choose the frog because I need a little bit of space, right? I'm going to come forward, grab the front of the reformer. If I haven't been working knees to chest through tabletop on the way to out, then I don't have that hip integration of my extensor system to begin the work of pulling the open angle in the front of the hips. Right. As I come in through, I'm not going to hit a tabletop. Right. But I have to be able to feel that position as I come through back in knees to chest, pushing out through. I sometimes will have people stop in the middle of the spring so that they actually feel the push and reach. This is more of an open hip. So as I come in, I'm coming into active flexion. And if I've been working that tabletop to knees to chest position, I know that I need to pull the weight of the spring up with me versus allow my low back to give in to the weight of the spring and give in to the weight of gravity. But if I haven't first felt that deep flexion with significantly less weight on it by lying on the Cadillac as we were, or in even in leg springs, right? Which is significant, significantly less load and weight into your hip flexors than when you're here. It's really hard then to come to the reformer with all that weight and teach a position which is so acute in the angle of flexion versus more open at that 90. So think about that. Think about that in what you ask your body to do, what you ask your clients to do, and why you were trained in your training to use one, the other, or both. I think we need to be able to have maxi maximum flexion and extension of hinge and ball and socket joints. We move best when we can move freely.